So today I wanted to talk about um, <clears throat> the concept of, of empathy, of, you know, trying to understand, hang on a second, sorry, had those on for something else I was doing, uh, of trying to understand where the people are coming from. Um, and this is really important both for those who are trying to understand people with depression and those with depression, and really kind of any any mental illness or anything like that where where we don't really, we can't really connect but we can try to understand, you know, I don't understand what it's like to struggle with, um, oh gosh, what's, what's a fair example? Um, uh, bipolar depression doesn't seem to be an issue for me. Um, I think body dysmorphia is, is the term. I, I'm kind of a little bit, um, off on that, but you know, there, there are things that we can't understand because they're not our lived experience. Um, I can't understand what it's like to be short and short people can't really understand what it's like to be tall, but we can try. And so, um, as, as I was thinking about talking about empathy and this, this effort to connect with others, and I want to be clear here, this is something that I have some room to work on too. Um, but I wanted to go to something that's kind of political in nature, but something that, that I thought was really, really fascinating. And it's tied to what happened a few years ago with, with Colin Kaepernick. Okay. So for those of you who don't know, um, I don't know how you don't know, but Colin Kaepernick, um, was protesting what he saw as police, police brutality against black people, that black people were being, um, more frequently targeted and harmed by, um, by police more frequently killed. Um, and so he wanted to protest this and, um, and, and I mean, there was a lot of media coverage of this and I'll get to that in a little bit, but I don't want to focus on Kaepernick. I want to focus on a man named Nate Boyer. Okay. So this is Nate Boyer. He was a, a former Green Beret, um, also played in the NFL and he noticed, um, Kaepernick's protest before most people seem to, before it became, um, huge public news. In fact, he noticed it. You can see here with the, uh, with the red arrow, Colin Kaepernick began his protest by sitting for the national anthem. Um, he would sit because he felt that, um, the United States was not respecting black people and he wanted to bring attention to that. And so he would sit for the national anthem and, um, Nate Boyer noticed this. And so he could have done a few things, right? He could have, um, brought attention to it, posted on social media, he could have um, increased the outrage. He could have said, look at how terrible he is. Um, you know, he, he could have done a lot of things. But what he did is he actually contacted Kaepernick and he said, I, I don't like what you're doing. I feel like you're disrespecting, um, you know, so much of what I've done with my life. And um, I'll, post a, I'll post a video of him talking about this in the, in the you know, the thing down there in the, in the description. But the thing that I thought was really interesting is he, he met with Kaepernick and he said, Hey, I don't, I don't like what you're doing. Um, let's talk about it. And Kaepernick talked to him about it. And this is not one of those, you know, crazy, awesome, you know, they became best friends necessarily, although they did end up spending time together. And you can see here, Boyer doesn't join him in his kneeling, right? Boyer stands next to him with his hand over his heart in the traditional way of, of, showing respect to the flag and the national anthem and, and all that that's connected to that. But because he reached out to Kaepernick, Kaepernick, instead of sitting, you can see he moved to kneeling. And this was a sort of compromise as Kaepernick listened to Boyer and Boyer listened to Kaepernick and they talked about this and Boyer said, okay. And in, in the video that I'm going to post, Boyer said, Boyer says that Kaepernick asked him, what do you think is something that I could do? to still show respect for you and the people who serve and our flag and all that while still bringing attention to something that I think is really important to me. And Boyer suggested that, you know, we kneel in prayer. Um, we kneel to show respect. So maybe kneeling instead of sitting was kind of a middle ground between these, you know, these extremes. And one of the things that I think is important to understand is Boyer at no point says, you know, I get you. We're, we're on the same page here. You totally do what you need to do. I don't think he ever really 100% bought in to what Kaepernick um, was doing. Not 100%. Um, but he listened and he tried to understand. And because of that, what we saw was instead of increasing violence, instead of increasing 
disconnect instead of increasing this 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 bridge between a certain kind of people and another kind of people um boyer helped to create did i say bridge instead of creating a a, a rift a barrier um you know a cavern between the two he tried to work to build a bridge and he created a more peaceful result and uh sorry i know that I know that talking politics is 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 fraught, and I've had my own struggles with with understanding the balance that I want to strike. But I think that example can carry over to when we're talking to someone um, who's dealing with mental health issues, because um, Boyer doesn't understand; he cannot ever fully understand what it's like to be a black man in America, because he's not. Um, and someone who doesn't have depression, or you can fill in whatever mental health issue you want to, someone who doesn't have mental health issues really can't understand what it's like but you can try and part of what I'm doing with with some of these videos when I talk about when when I talked about self harm when I talk about depression specifically I'm trying to help those of you who don't struggle with depression to to understand a little bit about what it's like because that helps right because if we can understand where someone is coming from um to the best of our ability and we start to see them as a person who has issues rather than as the issue um, it can help us cope. It can help us to to, to deal with it. It can make it better. Um, it's never, I don't think, going to resolve all the issues. I know, um, especially recently, um, my family has been struggling with coping with the way I've been handling things. Um, apparently, I've been a, a lot more on edge lately, and I'm not 100% sure why. I'm still working on that. But because they know that I don't function the way I normally do, um, they they express concern and and i'm struggling with that i'm struggling with a lot of things right now honestly but knowing that they're trying to to work with me and and understand me and and cooperate with me and get where i'm coming from instead of preaching to me or kind of you know um just telling me to stop it and get over it and and just you know be normal there they're they're trying to work with me rather than against me and because of that i feel <sighs> to be completely honest it makes it hard because i know that i'm causing them grief i know that i'm causing them concern and i'm not happy about that and i wish i knew what to f what to do about it but fortunately i don't feel like they're against me um my my negative my negative emotions relating to this are tied to feeling like I am causing them grief and not tied to me feeling like they're out to get me like they're they're against me they're 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 not on the other side of the divide they're not on the other side of this rift looking at me and you know condemning me they're they're trying to build a bridge to help me cope with what's going on um And I don't, I don't know how to, how to talk about that, except I, I, I'm grateful that they're, that they're, that they're trying to connect with me. Um, I honestly didn't anticipate going there with this, but as I was talking about examples, that that's that's an example that's very that's very prevalent. That's very now, um, because yeah, um, <laughs> well, I've got I've got a, a couple more minutes, so maybe we'll we'll shift gears a little bit and talk about how how as you're looking to understand where we're coming from, be aware that we're aware. Um, I know that what I'm doing is is hard on my family. I know that whatever I'm dealing with is unpleasant for them. I know that they would like me to be take this word in the way it's intended. They want me to be more normal and less and less negative, less less. I don't want to say the word bad. Um, they want me to not be 
this negative version of myself. I think I think that phrasing is okay, and it's not. It's not because it's hurting them. It's because they care about me, and I know that that is because they've tried to understand. Instead of lashing out and being upset at me, they understand that it's not that it's not happy for me either. And that what that does is it doesn't it doesn't change the fact that I'm aware that I'm causing grief to my family, but it changes my sense of how of of what they're doing because they are interested in helping me rather than interested in just fixing me. They're interested in trying to help me get back to to a, to a good place instead of just wishing I would get over it and move on. And that's that's better. It's hard when you have been taught this this feels like a whole separate thing, but since we're here, it's hard when you are taught by the culture around you that you need to be the strong supportive provider and knowing that you are not knowing that you are actually causing grief to your family. Um, and I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do with that, but this is, there, there's definitely a whole conversation we could have about how masculinity ties into depression. And I think that's worth having at some point. But men are not supposed to be weak. Men are not supposed to have problems and challenges that keep them from being men. And those of us who do are violating the code of manliness that we are supposed to live by. And in doing that, um, we become less than, at least in our own minds. And I know, I know that that for for Heidi, for my for my wife, um, I most of the time I have to be honest. I most of the time know that I am not less than in her eyes, but that doesn't keep me from feeling less than in my own eyes because I am broken because I am not a manly man who can just suck it up and and move past this this depression um but yeah that's that's probably something that I could talk about a little bit more that might be helpful especially to to guys who deal with depression because we don't talk about it because we're not supposed to be broken and that is garbage anyway um since I wanted to keep these kind of raw and honest and unedited, I went from empathy to um, toxicity in my relationship with my uh, gender. Anyway, um, I hope this helps. I'm going to keep going until I feel like it's either not good to me or not helpful to others. Um, but yeah, um, take care of yourselves. Good luck.